It's recording. It'll work. Cheers. Alright, what's up? Welcome to Miles Bonnie Show. Uh, it's Miles Bonnie Show. I'm Miles Bonnie. Beat Broker. This is Beat Broker. Um, he's gonna uh, be my guest today. And, um, you know, we just set up the studio. It's uh, part of our offices. Looking really right in here, you just don't see the, the glory. There's a lot. Yeah, there's um, a lot of gadgets, wires. You're not supposed to tell them that part, man. This is, this, is, this is the magical world of television, you know. Uh, it's, it's about what's on camera, not off camera. That's true. That's true. All right, so, no, um, you know, this is the first Miles Body show. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of videos yesterday. I'm wearing uh, my trusty flannel that I wore on the video I made yesterday. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to have new clothes every time. I do the Miles Bonnie show because that's it's not the way Miles Bonnie lives. Uh, well, if you got a product endorsement, it might be a different story. Well, if you want me to wear your your nice products, I'll wear them. I won't wear crap. Miles Bonnie show will not sell you crap. Where that's not the goal of the Miles Bonnie show. So oh. here's here's what happens. Uh, um, should we use a show name or a, or actual government name? We don't necessarily have a rule here. My government names, okay. All right, and. Uh, I'm going to go get my drink um, from backstage. If you want to introduce yourself real quick, um, the first official, you know, first person on the show. Hi there. Uh, my name is Andrew Rail. I am the beat broker. That's uh, pretty official. Yeah. I don't even call you Andrew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Drew. Drew, if we want to have a, you know, a better relationship. Yeah, a close relationship. Yeah. Me and Drew are very close. Closest two men can be without being, you know, yeah. Hungry? Hungry, yeah. All right. So, uh, here we are, Miles Bonnie Show. Kansas City-based show um, uh, brought to you by Nate Sounds. Um, I believe this show is partly, partly brought to, lead to us by Symbol uh, Heavy. That's correct. Symbol Heavy is a, is a, is a sponsor, sponsor of today's show. Um, they paid for the gas and stuff and, and all of our lighting. Uh, in the corners. Anyway yeah. Um, occasionally, the sound may be obstructed by a glass jar. So um, we'll see. No, no, it's fine. It might be add character. <clears throat> okay, let's get into it. Um, so I thought it might be nice um, to. I really want the show to reflect the community that we live in. You know, it's important to give back, and it's it important is. to uh, to maintain a relationship with those with whom. You live, and let's face it, it takes a village, right? So Wherever you are, you have to contribute to, to make the, the world a better place. Yeah. All right. Um, so I grabbed some papers today, Drew. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll just I'll just hop through some of them. I have, Please. I have the latest pitch. Granted, this is being filmed um, January 8th, 2009. So the pitch... I have went free weekly here in Kansas City. Yeah, okay, that's right, that's right. We're thinking international. The pitch is um, basically a Village Voice style... Um, corporate conglomeration, independent, uh, weekly, free paper, arts and entertainment. Funded by sex ads in the bank. Yeah, but although I do have to give props right away to American Apparel, who ever since moving to um, Kansas City always bought the middle of the back, which was genius. Uh, I don't know how much it costs, and it's probably not that much, but... It, it sold me. I'm a American Apparel all the way to... Dinner. No, no, me too. I have a sweatshirt that I'm wearing. I'm an American Apparel fan. Um... Inc. Inc. is uh, Kansas City Star's attempt to uh, fight the pitch. Um, doing quite well. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing well. It's, I'd say it's a little bit less, uh, there's a little bit more journalism going on in here, a little investigation, a little edge in the pitch for Kansas City. Inc. is a little bit more um, mallish. Mainstream palatable. Mainstream palatable. Um, Quality product, though. Safe. Yeah, it's it fun. It's, it's more fun. Mm -hmm. And I, I still read it. There's nothing against the pitch. Or the game. All right, they also have a, the Kansas City Star. But let's just, you know, I'm not trying to take up too much time. We should have a counter on here. I don't know what time we started, um, but I see what time it is now. All right, I'll look through. Here's some things that I found interesting. Um, shouts to Nadia. Uh, I'll have to keep doing this. Um, best of little thing right here. I guess uh, Nadia, um, writer for the pitch, is included in play uh, pay-to-play hip-hop or her article, Pay to Play Hip Hop Hustlers Are Making Off with Kansas City Rappers Hard and Cash, was included in a book. Uh, titled, Excellent article at that. It was, it was yeah. very good. Yeah, she writes pretty thorough articles. Best uh, Music Writing 2008 by Da Capo Press. I don't think that's any affiliation with Jim Jones, but. Congratulations, Nadia. Yeah, Nadia. Good, good job. Let's see what else we got here. Um, 
I folded over some pages, you know. The Miles Bonney show doesn't have that large of staff, so we do what we can. People's Liberation Big Band. I've been I've been hearing about them. It's a picture. Alright. Um, page uh, 31. Um, you heard them yet? Uh, I haven't heard. I haven't bar. not seen a show yet. They yeah, play at the so. record bar. It's, it's a big band, although not necessarily a jazz big band. This is the monthly Sunday night, correct? Um, I suppose. I it, it says is. it somewhere in here. Yeah, monthly gigs at the record bar. Um, Jason Harper, who wrote the article, said if Charles Mingus were alive, he would come to People's Libs, People's Lib gigs, People of Liberation, Big Band, or whatever, um, and probably roll back his eyes and howl with pleasure. But he's dead. Um, <laughs> so that's what it says. I'm a big Charles Mingus fan, so I'll check it out. I don't know if I trust Jason's opinion uh, regarding Charles Mingus or not, but I guess that will be, the, you know, the truth will be demonstrated. I saw the Cow Cottonmouth Kings are coming. I'm not going to show you all these pictures. It's, we don't have a zoom lens on this. But more importantly, uh, La Coca Nostra is listed. Their logo is. Um, I'm fascinated. I especially like Slane, who I met when I was in Boston on tour. Sounds good. Big fan of Slane. Uh, shouts to everybody out there. Shouts to Leeds in Boston. Um, anyway, I doubt he's coming. But with you know the crew is so big, the La Coca Nostra thing. He, he's not listed. I don't know. Uh, no, no, no one's listed. I mean, I didn't spend that much time, but there you go. There you at go. first glance, no one was listed. It's worth checking out, nonetheless, though. I mean, the the likelihood. The co Coca Cola thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't like what ill bill. I don't think it's. They have like, I don't know how many people are official, but there's probably like twenty, thirty. Um, I'll round it up. I see a uh, Dola White, a hip hop covers band from eighties and nineties, will be at the Czar Bar on, on January tenth. It's a place I haven't checked out yet, and I've heard good things. I do want to go to Zarbar. I know nothing about Dola White. I just thought it was kind of, you know, classic I uh, white self-deprecation within the hip-hop realm. pretty much what it amounts to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking in terms of name. Yeah. Is that how the performance is as well? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's uh, white exploitation, if you will. You know? Well, I think with a kind heart, mm -hmm. I assume. Do you think we're moving too quickly, or is it too slow? I think we're, I think we're progressing just nicely. All right, cool. Sometimes my timing is a bit off, so feedback is appreciated. You know, we'll, we'll give you the email at the end of the show. Also at Zarbar, which I do want to check out, which is a uh, 1531 Grand Casey Mo. Slow Bros will be playing with a whole bunch of other people for the uh, Work for Work Fair Incorporated Songwriters Showcase Benefit on January 14th. Slow Bros is a uh, Andrew Connor, friend of mine, and Jake Blanton of Ghosty, both great musicians. Um, Saturday, January 21st or 24th, Awkward Smooth Confusion Sess Crew. Um, is that Sephiroth? I've never actually had Sephiroth to say that. Sephiroth is, is the name. Yes. And Vertigon. Otherwise known as Toon. Shout out. Toon, no doubt. Um, all playing at the Riot Room um, on Broadway. That little joint right up there. Um, let's see. Anything else worthwhile on the pitch to grab my, my eyes? Okay, this page. Saw this for the first time last, last week. The um, licensed massage page. Um, not sure if I know exactly what they're trying to define there as licensed massage. But um, I know some. They don't massage. advertise happy endings, but uh, yeah, you would uh, assume that most of these do offer them based on the advertisement. I say most of these girls don't live in Kansas City and probably aren't even licensed massage people. Masseuses, if you will. Yeah, I, I will. Massage therapists. Yeah, yeah I don't know what the therapy is, but you know, it give, gives the whole thing a bad, bad name. Bad, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Sometimes it's a good taste. It just depends on the girl. <laughs> It depends on whether it's your mouth or theirs. I suppose. Yeah. All right, Ink. Ink, uh, this is the... I like the question. Much respect to, uh, to Ink. Um, shouts to Sarah, uh, who I particularly follow. I apologize. This is very unprofessional of me. However, it's my mom who's flying in tonight. It's very important. Hey, Mom, just a second. You're on, you're on Miles Bonnie's show, which is taping live. What do you have to say? Yeah, really, well, Miles, I'd like to say that my flight is about to take off from Cleveland. And I should be seeing you about 11 o'clock your time. And I love you. I love you, Mom. And thanks so much for doing a drop for my mixtape. I can do better, but I'm distracted because the stewardess is talking at the same time. I think you did a great job. That, I'm Drew, by the way. Hi. It's, it's B Broker, Drew. <laughs> My best man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the whole intro came together very well, and, and you contributed very nicely to it. I so, did? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm so happy. All right, Mom. I love you. Guys. 11. See you, see you 11. See you. You'll be there, right? Around 11, right? About 11, yeah. yeah. And I, I check a bag, so I should be good. Check a bag? Right? 
I did not check a bag, so I should. Oh, bag! Oh, wow, I'm efficient of you. All right, you're a pro. Love you, mom. Love you, honey. Hi, Drew. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, cool. That's mom. She's coming to town. She's coming to town tonight. Pretty exciting. You know, I don't have much family in the area, so uh, shouts to my sister who lives, you know. Um, should I wrap up the newspaper section? It's taking too long. No, no, no. You know, long we're, we're figuring it out. You know, this is the first Miles Body episode one. Uno. Uno. We need a Spanish, uh, Spanish translator. Okay. Ink Magazine. Voodoo Lounge. Lots of DJs come to Voodoo Lounge. I've never been to Voodoo Lounge, although I've heard nothing but good things about the venue. Yeah, it's a great look. You know, the aesthetic is nice. There's, There's a whole bunch of DJs here. Inside the casino, here. unfortunately. Well, that, you know. Okay, can you read any of this? Okay, you can kind of read that stuff. Some DJs I don't really know anything about. I don't. There are lots of DJs out there. You know, it's a DJ world, but DJ Danny Days, Tina T, Exodus, and Ben Cohen are all coming. For those who are fans, you probably think I'm an idiot, but like most people, we have no idea who these people are. I would like to hear what they play. I'm sure they're good. They're playing Voodoo Lounge. I don't headline a Voodoo Lounge. Yeah, it's, so, a, um, it's big shit. They're doing it major. And as Voodoo says, check the spins on our imported DJs. Little corner note there. So, um, you know, I guess it's like imported beer is kind of the That's joke they're going for. Um, all right, let's, let's flip through here real quick. Again, not trying to take up the whole show. Shouts to um, the... Uh, Hearts of Darkness, man. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about it. All the way. Let's yeah. talk about that. Lester. Yeah, Lester. Lester Jones. Tell the people out there about um, about Lester Jones. Maybe I should zoom in just to change the... Oh, no, you know. Feel free Let's to try it. Let's see how it goes. A little scary, you know. How's that? Does that hurt? No, no. It's not, not good. Yeah, it's actually not that much different. So. Oh, all right. Well, I'm trying to, you know, add a little new perspective here. I hope you enjoy the, the cameraman's we'll work. We'll edit that out. It'll, no. it'll be a smooth transition. There's no editing here. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, we, I guess we can curse too. <laughs> I don't know, but um, there's a uh, there's a time and a place for everything. Um, you know, apparently YouTube is a place where it's allowed, but um, you know, use good judgment. And, We're going and for network television, so all aspects of your life. Any words about Hearts of Darkness? Uh, they're a fantastic band. This is one that I think everybody in the city needs to check out. Uh, Lester Jones, a good friend of ours, also known as Les Ismore on the hip hop scene is uh, one of the most energetic and enthusiastic frontmen I think I've experienced in terms of uh, and it's, it's pop and Afrobeat based music. It's and honest it's, passion. Very, very honest. And these people, uh, they're all very skilled musicians who are uh, very adept at improvisation and it's a very, very live, danceable show. Uh, Hearts of Darkness. Worth it at any price. Hearts of yeah. Darkness, Afrobeat band. No doubt. So this was um, big them up for their New Year's Day at Davies Uptown Ramblers Club, which I probably would have been at had I not been at my own show, where we were DJing at Crosstown Station. Shouts to them. All right. Um, wanted to give them a little little up and up, you know. Um, I see that uh, Mall Cop is coming out. Oh, yeah. Kind of curious. I think it'll probably be really bad, but I want it to be good because I think he's a pretty funny guy. I was in a... When I was in Germany, I thought that was something ringing. It was it was ice. I was in Germany and people were um, asking me about um, what's that show that he's on? Oh, King uh, of Queens. King of Queens. Yes, people yes, ask yes. me to watch King of Queens. Shout out to in Vienna. Uh, yeah, popular. Over there, yeah, right? I guess so. I mean, I don't know whether that's their version of what goes on in America tele television or whether it's one of the few shows that gets over there. One of the many. You know, I'm ignorant. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, that's, okay. But it's a good show. I actually started watching it because people asked me about it out there. Um, shouts to the designers. There's a little section here on fashion designers, as there often is. I think the press tries to do well by local fashion designers. There's not very many opportunities for them to spread their fashionable abilities, aside from some galleries. But, um, you know, Camp City has a decent... Um, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily say fashion scene. I would say um, kind of like, like, like it's people that create clothing rather than um, a large culture of people who dress well. Yeah, I'd say there's a number of independent clothing yeah. designers. Yeah, that, uh, well said, well said. That do a very good job. But yeah. Uh, unfortunately not recognized on the national, even the regional scenes at this point for, yeah. for in a lot of their cases. A, co a couple people have gotten out, you know, you know, I hesitate to name names, but all right, there's another in the section. But if you're watching this, check out. Check out Kansas City fashion because it's fashion. Out, you don't want to sleep. The 18th Street um, is generally the area, the Crossroads District, at this point in time, given my my knowledge, um, where fashion takes place. There are openings. Um, shouts to Beth. Shouts to Peggy Nolan, who probably always gets shouted out, and I don't know her personally, but 
She does good, good work. Yeah, it's it's a uh, you know herb herb magazine worthy. All right. Um, so they asked a whole bunch of people, not including either of us um, in Inc., what should happen in Kansas City in 2009. As I was skimming it, I want to run through a couple of them. Um, there's lots here, so I'll, I'll try and edit it down. Natalie Hoskins on uh, page 21 um, uh, says we need to revive Troost Avenue. I agree with that. I live near Troost. Um, you know, uh, Troost used to be the uh, racial dividing line, if I'm not mistaken. I still think in a lot of cases is viewed that way, unfortunately. Um, and there's some businesses popping up. People try. It's just a matter of how some of the works. Um, all right, uh, who we got? Travis Wilson says to further develop its own identity. That's what Kansas City needs to do. I agree with that. Um, and I, I, yeah, no, yeah. No, please. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, this kind of leads us to other thoughts. We have light rail talk, lots of light rail. I'm pro light rail. Um, uh, someone, uh, Courtney Hartman says Kansas City needs to have an automated message line that gives daily updates on nightlife events. Um, I'd be willing to contribute. Probably not going to take that one on myself, but I do what I can. Um, Courtney Hartman, if you're out there, uh, you know, stay in touch with N8Sounds.com, I-N-N-A-T-E-S-O-U-N-D-S. Try and provide some entertainment for the Kansas City folks. Please. Um, and we're going to get to our juice segment, so don't think it's just me talking and other people adding commentary. That's what it is at this point. At this point, it is. So far in the history, that's what happens. Um, address the two biggest problems, says Hassan. Uh, that are keeping the city from further growth. Crime and education. I would agree with that. Thank you, Hassan. Indeed. Um, the schools are really bad around here. And I have a daughter who's not currently going to school yet, but, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, needs to progress on light rail. Okay. What else do we have? Um, schools. Uh, it really doesn't matter. P&L. People talk about the Power and Light District, which is basically an entertainment district. That was interesting. Wow, the light went off. All right, well, um, here, talk to them about P&L while I go and try and change the battery. Let's see the power and light district, you know, I, I've actually yet to spend a decent evening down there, so I'm not one to say a whole lot about it. Yeah, yeah. I, from what I understand, it doesn't fit my general uh, liking. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that one alone, try not to say anything too negative, because it absolutely is a hometown, uh, hometown favorite, if you will. It's and it's it's changed a lot in this area. It's it's brought a lot of new life downtown. So I don't want to talk badly, but uh, well, there, it's an effort, you know. But it it's definitely. It uh, I mean, my theory is this: um, you can't purchase culture. True. So you can't purchase um, <laughs> an attempt at adding culture to a city. So um, that being said, it's not necessarily my scene either because it's not an inherent kind of a. I can't see anything in the dark here. Although this may be bright. Um, there you go. Is that too bright? It's pretty it's dark. It's not a whole lot different. It's actually about the same lighting right now. How does it? Uh, how does it affect the scene? Oh wow, that's pretty. That's creepy. pretty dynamic, huh? Yeah. No, you should see that actually. That this could, is fun that a whole other shadowy element. This I, I see it actually, back there. Yeah, this isn't bad. Should we leave it? Yeah, it's not bad at all. I mean, you can't see definition as much. So. That's pretty annoying. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't go with that. All right, let's not go with that. Okay. This is, um, you know, this is live television. You know, this is something that happens. This is the way it goes. I've seen this happen a number of times on Saturday Night Live. Right. Uh, and the local news. Right. So. Um, all right. How about this, Drew? How about that? Fascinating? Yeah, no, it's extra male. Is it pretty annoying? Wow. I'm wondering, what is that? Is that a drink? No. That's my drink? No. That's, oh, that might be. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. That's my drink in the microphone. Yeah. 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 Um, should we take a break and charge the light? Sure. We're going to take a short commercial break. All right. Um, right here, let's go to a new segment. I have a segment that I, uh, that I wanted to introduce to you guys, and it's called um, Outside of the Box, you know, uh, here at the Miles Bonnie Show, which is me. Uh, we don't necessarily like for everybody to stay in their little boxes. You know, how many of you guys have been on a plane before? Have you been on a plane? Been on a plane. Yeah. You, you're, you look out of the plane, and you see all these little boxes, and it looks like a big... Uh, Lego Sims, thing. yeah, Legos, yeah, and you're like, wow, we all live in little boxes, and um, they're so small. So outside of the box, we're outside of um, the studio here, 
and we encourage you guys to do the same. This uh, episode of Outside of the Box actually features a, a moment we were both participating in, which is um, Wakarusa 2007. 2007, was it? It was a 2008. No, it was 2008. No, 2008. Yeah, more recent than I thought, this last okay. summer. So. Walker's 2008, um, that we both DJed, uh, shouts to Department Zero. Um, and uh, I performed Walk On By shortly after recording it, um, the cover song, and uh, I performed it with a wireless mic in the middle of um, strangers that didn't know what was going on. and attracted a lot of attention. It was, did it? Yeah, it really did. It, it was, was fun. It was, it was fun. fun. He's, he's spinning the tunes, I'm rocking the mic, and... Uh, and there's a little feedback because I'm so far away from the stage, but it's fascinating and it's short. I hope you enjoy it um, outside of the box, and we'll be right back. Here we go. <laughs> So we're back um, with some temporary, temporary uh, lighting here. Apologize. Actually, I don't apologize. This is beautiful. No, this, no we don't apologize at all. We we're glad it happened. Um, I don't really need to go through the whole rest of the Kansas City Star. A couple things they talked about the murder rate. It's not as high as it used to be. They're talking about Kansas City, Kansas murder rate. But don't kill each other. You know, don't get in fights. Don't start fights. You don't even have to be a part of fight if you don't want to. It's all, you know, self-management, as we say. Um, I actually heard a, uh, someone say that Kansas City clocked the very first homicide in 2009, which is a very unfortunate thing if that's true. I don't know if that's already. Yeah, that we we were the we had the first one. Oh, for the yeah. nation. For the nation. Oh, that's it's not good. Not good at all. Um, uh, has the mayor run out of political capital? Says the uh, the headline here. Oh, now we got to work with the new lighting. Okay, yes. Yeah, the mayor's a, a mess. And I voted for him, unfortunately. I'm an idiot. I, I voted for Funkhauser. Sometimes and Funkhauser... Choice, you know? Sometimes yeah. I mean, I didn't really know what I was voting for, apparently, which... You know, whatever. He had a great name and a pretty cool look. I think we were all you know, stoked. That the Abe Lincoln only goes so far. I mean, I agree. I agree yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, he just... It's bad. Like, I don't even know what he's doing in the office at this point. Like, literally in the office. So, all I know is the what people on the street and on the news and people know what's going on and or hear about and that's a whole bunch of nonsense. It's basically bad publicity and he's not very good at handling it. Or improving it. Yep, not thus far. Yep. Which is, you know, the mayor. You're you're a head. You're a figurehead more than much else. You gotta you know, uh, unfortunately his uh, public life has been or his private life, rather, has been dragged into the public, you know, because of his wife's issues, you know, as a volunteer. Oh. And I think that has had a major effect on his ability to perhaps do his job, but nonetheless... And that's their fault also. bad policy choices. And yeah, I mean, that's... Did. I mean, you know, how are you going to have... It's like Jay Leno having his wife lead the band, and then all of a sudden people are talking about his wife. Like, <laughs> duh. <Yeah. laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, whatever. Um, I hear what you're saying. And I, I always agree with Drew. You know, I'm, I'm devil's advocate to a certain extent. All right, let's uh, let's see what I have here on the agenda. We talked about a uh, Funkhauser. Um, let's get to the guest. Here, move a little bit this way. I feel bad you're you're not center stage. All right, so so introduce yourself to people. Tell them what you what you do, what you're up to lately. Uh, well, I'm a beat broker, Drew, to most of my friends. Uh, lately, I've just been focusing on trying to DJ and and promote shows really as much as I can. Um, so I've been, you know. Taking gigs in and out of town as frequently as possible. If anybody is looking for anything along the lines of, uh, you know, a high quality, you know, full range DJ for your nightclub or so, you know, event. And for those people, me. I mean, I'll, I'll vouch that he's uh, credible. I mean, you know, not that I'm that great, but personally, in terms of my opinion, he's great. You know, reliable. He'll do Show whatever up, you do need. What I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Go home. You know. Yeah. And he's so, not until I get paid. Yeah, right. The way it works. I think the, the edge is probably that um, rather than, uh, you know, a wedding DJ who or other people who may just buy a bunch of equipment and show up with uh, the top 
thousand songs that ever came out in the last couple decades. Um, how would you describe, how are you different than a person that just shows up with a bunch of best of CDs? Well, I tend to play music that really means something to me personally, which I think, you know, comes through in my sets. Uh, I think it, it, it generally can be taken as fairly genuine love of music, which I think is something that's lacking in a lot of DJs, not to toot my own horn, but I think that that's something that I, I uh, don't see in most of the guys out in this town. There are a handful that really do, this man included. DJ Just, Jock Max, obviously people of that caliber that, that really, you know, can play from their soul. And I think that's what, you know, sets a good DJ apart in my eyes. It's not necessarily the technical details and, and what have you. But, yeah. Although I like to think that I can hold my own in that regard, too. So. Yeah, but, yeah, I would agree. We try to be prepared for everything, and Drew is better at being prepared for everything than I am. I'm trying to get better at it, though, because when it comes down to it, and as which makes you a good DJ, not only do you play stuff you're passionate about, but there's a certain degree of playing things that people would like to hear mm -hmm. In, in certain situations, um, for the reason being that they're there to enjoy themselves. Absolutely, yeah. and, and you have to consider your, your venue and your crowd first. Yeah, and also it's very important that the, the owner of the establishment um, discuss with the DJ or the performer or the um, waiter, you know, whatever you want to see happen in your establishment. Because you really do have to have a vision. Um, and if you don't... Don't Let, be mad at the DJ if you don't have a vision. Yeah, don't be mad at the DJ. I mean, you know, and and, and if the DJ needs to have the vision for you, that's fine. But um, realize them, that, okay. yeah, tell them that, verbalize that, and, and let them actually do what you ask them to do then. Um, well, yeah, what DJ else? aside, you know, uh, I'm trying to promote shows. Uh, the, the most important at the moment coming up, February 21st, we have Black Milk coming to the record bar, which yeah. I think is going to be an important event for Kansas City Hip Hop. Uh, approach, uh, long time Kansas City favorite. He's going to be flying into town to, to open up the show, and we'll also, uh, we will have D Will there. We talked about that. Cool. We will be, we'll be performing as, as well. Um, D Will, uh, quality artist, Black Milk esque. Yeah. yeah, a little Black Milk esque, which, you know, it fits the mold. Not a bad thing. Yeah, okay. Black Milk is JD esque. Well, we're going to sandwich yeah. them around Approach, and it, it should, you know, create Approach, a who yeah. is. He's a funk kind of party funk, starter. Yeah. So. To quote the worst uh, quote I recall reading about him, Cross between, and this is not true, is not what I'm saying. Yeah, the the tape's running out. We'll get a new tape. Right. Cross between Coolio and Car and Charlie Tuna. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's I read a, that. I disagree. Yeah, I wouldn't go there, but but he's actually. I will say, well, that could I love be a approach by a lot of people's standards. So yeah. no, absolutely, I love approach. Approach is a great performer. Um, performs, you know, puts on a better show than than I ever could. Yeah, that's for damn sure. That's right. Yeah. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I meant that in my in terms of myself. Not yeah. Really. So approach is great. Um, yeah. So that'll be nice. That'll be a nice show. And I love approach. And approach and I are going to do more things in 2009. Shouts to Deter Records in its newest incarnation. All right. Um, well, we'll just rock this out. You know, um, back in the in the in the old school Miles Bonnie TV days um, when we had our first episode, um, which I think is going on right now. Um, there's only so much you can prepare for. You know, so we're figuring it out. The tape's gonna run out. We'll get a new tape. You know, it's nothing. You know, it's nothing, or it's nothing. It, it ain't nothing. Um, yeah. Forget about it. Okay. <clears throat> um, we will come up later with your uh, your for the record pick. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I have brought. We brought some vinyl. Some we'll, we'll we'll play a song for you, a couple songs maybe, depending on how we feel, to round out the show and to really give you more taste of Be Broker. I think Be Broker will be a frequent guest. Um, he and I are good friends and hang out a lot. Um, however, there will be rotation. Um, do you have the the dates? Did you already mention the dates of the Black Milk show and, and such? February 21st, Saturday, February 21st. Um, Is the Black Milk? Yes. At the record bar in Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, and while we don't have uh, the f next one inked, I think, believe we'll be looking at March 5th for Guilty Simpson. That's what we another have. Quality, contest, so another good quality. Quality show. choice. Steady P will be in the opening act. It should be, should be good stuff. Um, and you don't know necessarily... I will be at Firefly, in fact. Tomorrow night, although we probably won't be on the air. That's okay. Like that, so, you know. uh, tomorrow night, um, which will probably be tonight, since I'll try and get this up tomorrow. There you go. Um, which is today, yeah. actively. Minute, you know, it's promotion nonetheless. Yeah, Friday, tonight, um, will be... Uh, An excellent little new speakeasy over in Westport. Uh, I don't remember the... 4118. 4118, 418, yeah. 4118, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania um, Westport, um, near California, was Korma Sutra. Basically, across the street from Korma Sutra, down the block from um, the cigar shop. 
The Nate uh, Sounds takeover. Miles Bonney is is now booking Friday nights there, so you'll see a number right. of well currently, days. currently, currently. Um, yeah, I think this will last. I think it'll last too. I mean, you know, shouts to Jason and the staff at Firefly. Um, it's a new project. We're all going in uh, together, uh, making it work. But at this point, every Friday uh, in January um, and probably into February and other months, uh, and Nate Sounds DJs, uh, myself, Jock Max, uh, Beat Broker, John Brewer, Leonard Destroy. Um, we'll bring in some other people in time. See how it goes. Check on sounds.com for those updates, um, as well as our MySpace pages. I'm working on getting a comprehensive calendar for sounds.com of events, but, um, you know, I can only do so much um, when things aren't crazy easy. So, that's in the works. Um, I'd like to update, uh, I'd say I'm, a, I'm big on Twitter lately. I haven't even checked it out, but yeah, I've heard a lot. I think it's probably better for people who um, have phones that can utilize internet easily, readily. And uh, like I've got an iPhone recently, so I that's don't. yeah. No, I never had a good iPhone before, so I definitely understand what it's like. But um, it's fascinating. It reminds me of the early days of MySpace, where you could hit up an artist, um, and they'll hit you back. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's real it's people still. It's really not the great attributes of early MySpace days. Is yeah, that, yeah the, no, no one was unreachable. At the, that it's true. That's that's yeah. That's a, and I'll say good reason to get an iPhone. There. Well, no, I mean, you know, there's other things, too. I like the BlackBerry stuff. I don't really care about phones, you know, but um, it's fun to stay in touch, you know. I just, that's why? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's look. I'm going to go on the websites real quick. Um, the two main websites I update would be milesbonnie.com, which I just redesigned. Yesterday, um, I created uh, the discography video, which is a rundown from all my releases from 99 to 2008. Leaving out a few. I didn't talk about Stuff Daddy. I didn't talk about some other things, but all the major ones. Um, so that's currently featured on the front page. Um, if you don't know anything about me, or if you do, but you don't know the whole story, you can learn more. Um, really, I made it, though, just to clarify all the random tons of releases I have, so yeah. that if you're trying to... Substantial you know, catalog for anybody. It's substantial. It's, it it's a labor of love rather than, um, you know, coordinated marketing business choice. So all, No filler. No it's filler. I, I appreciate that. Um, all right, so that's there. I have my Twitter updates on there on the left. So if you go there and you're like, Miles Bonnie's Twitter, what does that mean? Um, and by all means, go to milesbonnie.com in a new tab um, or window so you can follow along. But that's basically a, uh, you know, quick blog. Uh, it has a limited amount of things you can say. I also have Twitter hooked up to my Facebook as well as uh, Blip hooked up to my Twitter, which is hooked up to Facebook. So um, if I write something on one of those in the chain, it updates the other. But uh, Blip is fun. Blip FM, I learned about recently also through Twitter users. Um, basically, you can pick songs and play them and present them to people. They don't have everything, but they have a lot of pretty good catalog. It's kind of like a little fun way to present music to people. Um, I also have... Is it downloadable from... Person it's not downloadable, but you can listen to it. You know, basically, it sends out a link. Um, shouts to Pyramid West um, and my man Vashan around here in KC who did a three-part interview with me. Um, slash monologue, I like to call it, because I basically just talk for half an hour. But that's also on my my on my uh, MySpace. Um, Dude, I actually didn't realize that it was Vashon. So okay, you know, so you, too. Know, you came yeah. through and did the Keith Murray interview. At my yeah, yeah. Place, so good yeah, yeah. Vashon's great, man. Thanks a lot to that, man. It, it's, I think it's going to really, um, I don't know, it's nice. It's kind of like therapy. Put the mic back in. About the same, and we're back, and it's recording, and we're back, Miles Bonnie Show, wrapping up the um, first episode here with uh, Drew, aka Beat Broker, wow, that was pretty cool, that's pretty cool, that's a special effect, well, you know, that's actually, that's pretty fresh, alright, so cheers be it, to that. cheers, another happy accident, cheers, and this is the Wellers, um, aged, Wellers Scottish apple juice, juice. Apple juice, it is. Um, Alright, so I do want feedback on milesbonnie.com because I changed, I had this section that I put up, I did a whole lot of stuff, but home and away, I figured I have stuff for your house, stuff for when you're not at home, okay? Uh, basically, you have to click on what you want out of the four choices, but if that's too difficult, let me know. You know, innatesounds.com, or innatesounds at gmail.com, let me know if it sucks. I'm probably going to leave it either way because I like it, but I'm just curious if you hate it or not. Um, Innate Sounds blog. I am going to change that because it's not bright enough for me. You know, we're going for uh, for quality resolution here. Um, 
Is that what it did before? You know, this is this is one of that we bought this studio from a from an old from an old television station um, out in the middle of uh, Idaho, and uh, it works well sometimes and not others. All right, so as he's fixing the lighting, um, Daru, who is everywhere at once, uh, drummer producer. Um, recently did a song with Ab and or AB, I don't know how you say his name, and Black Milk, who uh, they're now playing for, uh, called On Deck. They made a little, uh, beautiful, Drew's a genius, we'll let it roll. Thanks, man. Um, they made a little video, or someone made a video that is on the innatesounds.com blog right now. That's pretty fresh, just kind of like, you know, texting out words. I mean, it's nothing special, but it's worthwhile effort and it's worth listening to the song. Um, also have some uh, flyers by him. Upcoming shows. Also, the uh, fourth of the four Letter Destroy Road Trip podcasts are out, which is basically. Like painting stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like a eclectic record mix stuff he made for Road Trip, I guess, last year that I grabbed and said, hey, you know, I'll throw it up there, see if people enjoy it. Um, that's about the update on that. Come out to the Firefly. What, what else is new in the, in the world of, uh, of Drew? Any, any words before we go to your, uh, you know, record, record of the episode? Yeah. Bought my first suit today. Yeah. How how did that go? What's what's your uh, what were you looking for? What'd you find? I uh, bought a nice chocolate gray pinstriped uh, extra long coat. It's, it's a nice look. It's, it's oh yeah, a little little pinnish. extra long coat. Yeah, okay, yeah. kind of kind of nice, penner's ass. Nice, a little penner's ass, but not not you know. I don't have the extra broad shoulders going on, so it's I'm not full pit. Mode. Wouldn't they give you the broad shoulders? Oh, they're 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 not built in the yeah, suit. Yeah, they're, they're not built in. Yeah, not the extra. All right, but it's it's a good look. I'm looking dapper. I'll be. Playing at a wedding on Saturday night, mm -hmm. so I'm, uh, this is going to be the, the virgin voyage for the, the suit. It'll be the main voyage, if you will. Yeah. Do you add um, private events to your MySpace page? I do not. Maybe I should, but it's probably not. Uh, you know, you, it, you don't need it's to. not in the best interest of the event. I find most of the time, if you do that, you know. Oh yeah? Why? Just people in be case. trying to follow you. Well, you never know. You know, I have some crazy fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> I do only because it actually helps me organize my life, so I can look on and be like, oh yeah, I am doing something that day. I use my eye calendar for that. All right. Which you probably have on your phone. Speaking of which, yeah, I do, and I love it. Um, Steve Jobs is sick. Physically? Yeah. Oh. Have you seen pictures? No. We'll go back to the... Um, now we're in the... Oh, okay, this brings me back to Kate's Kinsey's star. Let me first say, hey, look what's on this exciting page. Kind of looks like nothing. I mean, compared to this, hey, that's a real page. This, not so much a page. Um, in an era where it's already hard to sell newspapers, it doesn't, doesn't do good serve you well. Yeah, to run out of ink. Um, I know it, it, you print millions of pages every day, but I'm just saying, you know, in my copy, I couldn't read anything. Um, of course, that could make yours a collector. Well, I used to be more thinking along those lines. Now I think I'd be crazy. Yeah. Let me find this um, picture. More pages of stocks, which apparently they don't want you to read because they're so bad that you can't actually At see. At this point, I wouldn't want to read them either. So <laughs> it's like a gift. Good. All right, Steve Jobs. Here's a picture that they posted in the, in the paper today. Um... You know, you'll see a better paper online, but search for Steve Jobs, you know, news, whatever. On the mend, um, remedy for this nutritional problem, he's involved in treatment, um, it's hor a hormone imbalance that has been robbing me of the proteins my body needs to be healthy. So, hmm. um, you know, best to him. Do they have a name at all for that? What's the... I haven't read the whole thing. Interesting. They talk about his stock, blood tests, um... Well, yeah. Well, which is, which is a, yeah, uh, Tam and the family. Them. All right. Um, yeah, so if you have any feedback, innatesounds at gmail.com. Um, I think we're going to wrap up the show right now. It's the first show. Um, it's been fine, a little rocky, but not, not a big deal. It just doesn't necessarily, it's hard to keep the momentum, you know, so I'll have my, uh, my production things more in order for next time. I apologize if you're at all offended, which you may be by this uh, blasphemous show of uh, professionalism. You don't mind too much. <sighs> I'm going to settle down now, Drew. It's been kind of a lot. you know. Well, really... Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Cheers. Thanks for coming on the first show. Anytime. Um, you know, I, I just really want to do the show tonight, and despite it all, I think we handled it well. We did. So that, that's what friends are for. Um, yeah, I'm looking at my little tentative schedule here about what to talk about. I think that's about it. Um, any other words? I mean... 
here's the thing. I want this show. Let's get real. Can I get real with you guys for a second? Can I get real with you, Drew? You can get real. All three of us here at the table. Um, I want this show to be to bring light to what's actually happening in Kansas City, not from a journalistic perspective or in terms of traditional journalism with um, well-written articles that are long that most people don't actually fully read, um, but in terms of like an update on what I and other people on the show are feeling. Um, Direct, blunt information. Yeah, blunt information. Just kind of bring it to you. You know, we're not here to trash talk anybody. We're not here to be crude. We're here to to respect, but also inform. Inform for the purpose, as with all my endeavors, I feel for the greater good, for long term, um, beneficial, uh, progressive motions, in order to, to better help shape the city. Um, we're now going to. End out, Drew, with uh, one of your selections. Would you like to play? It's you know this is the first time I've had a segment. Um, you want to play one? You want to play three? Well, we'll play. How, you know, when when they signaled us the time's running out, we'll, we'll cut it. So, okay. Yeah. Well, um, can you guys let us know that? Thanks. All right. Um, would you want? Do you think it makes sense to just play the record and show it as it's playing and listen to it, um, or to get a little preemptive? Discussion about what the records you brought are. Well, uh, I think we just get right into the music. I mean, right. if anything, we can discuss while it's playing. Perhaps you don't know if we have. Well said, so. genius. This is why he's a guest because he's a brilliant mind. I thank you guys for watching. Um, I uh, try to do a wide variety of things to my detriment of not being able to do all of them brilliantly. But that being said, if any of you guys are really good at um, uh, creating logos or um, more than logos, if you are someone who creates a logo for this show um, for free and you send it to me, um, hopefully you can find someone else who can animate it for you. Because if you can send me an, uh, a video animation that I can use for interludes, uh, I will be right back, a um, welcome to the Miles Body show, it's, it's awesome. Like, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> um, Kansas City has a lot going for it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, your mother makes great apple pie. Any sort of segment, you know, transitions that'll say things like that. Um, you know, Miles Bonney uh, should actually complete his um, P90X program. Uh, things like that. Send them in, and eight sounds of Gmail. I will uh, debut them on the show um, to your benefit. You know, I in no way, in no way uh, appreciate your effort at all. No, I'm joking. It's great. Send it in. You know, this is a community experience. All right, let's get to the music. I'll uh, be quiet. Let's do it. Until next time, watch out for episode two, milesbody.com. Drew, watch out for Beat Broker. Peace. Show's coming up. That shows I haven't been looking at the light the whole time. Zambezi Dance from Instant Death. This is a song that I personally sampled in one of my favorite beats I ever made. Uh, I actually named the song after the album uh, Instant Death, which I had a lot of uh, anti-nuclear proliferation talk laced throughout it. Uh, ended up on the first and eight sounds mixtape actually. Uh, with, uh, mixed by Jock Max. We came together, one of my favorites. Um, the song's kind of lacking in substance for some people, but uh, I think it's got a lot of really interesting sounds. Uh, this particular instrument you're hearing is an African uh, thumb piano called the kalimba, played by Billy James. Um, and, and of course, we have you know you know Eddie Harris, who's quite possibly one of the greatest electric saxophone players, saxophone players in general. But uh, the electric sound on this album is kind of what he became known for in his later years. Uh, but uh, a really cool kind of uh, African-inspired jazz record by Eddie Harris. So. Blood out. Atlantic. 72. Side one.
about this one Drew. Uh, this is a uh, Fatback Band as we said. The album Hot Box. Uh, this song is Come and Get the Love. This is uh, another one that I sampled. Very fond of the beat, the end result. Uh, a D. Will song. Known as, known as You Will Never Know. No, I don't know. Well, that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Known as Time and Time Again. All right, we'll just put it out there. Time and time again, off the Cross Changes album. That's right. <laughs> anyway, an another fantastic song in its own right, one that I play frequently uh, when I'm in a more kind of melodramatic mood, uh, if you will. A lot of really cool sounds, so I really dig the, the you know the sharp rim shots, good percussion, uh, nice over compressed kind of old fashioned soul sound, something I'm really fond of. So yeah. let it ride. Yeah. Here we go. Enjoy. Come and get the 